welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where I thought we'd take a look at the super fiendish from today's edition of the Times and see how we see how we go with the solve. Um, so you can see immediately we can place a one there, and we can pencil mark some ones into these two squares here. Um, so when I say pencil mark, I mean I'm identifying within a three by three block. Uh, only two positions where a number can go. So you can see with this one and this one and this one interacting, the ones are locked into one of these two cells. Now, okay, and we've got two nines here, so I'm actually going to be able to place a nine into this cell and immediately use that pencil mark I've just made to place the one into this cell as well. Because I know that once the one isn't in one of the positions, I've eliminated it from one of those positions, it must be in the other position. Um, Okay, so let's carry on. I can place some pencil mark nines over here. Nine, nine, one, one. Let's mark some ones in there. Obviously, these three cells here are five, seven, and eight in some order. Uh, five, five. I can place a big five into this cell here. funny arrangement in the shoots here with this 7, 8 and 1, 3 so immediately you should be looking at column 8 and what what can go in what can be ruled out from these three cells you can see we can pencil mark some nines there and that allows us to place a 9 into this position and what's more this funny arrangement also allows us to use row 1 here so you can see this 5 and 2 we can immediately uh, you can place a five here and a two here. That's going to be quite helpful. Um, let's mark some twos over this side. Twos down here. Can't quite see how to make more use of that. Five here means we can place. Oh, sorry, no. We don't actually place the five there. And this five here, move this five here. Now we know these two cells are a seven, eight double. It's an odd puzzle actually. You can immediately see, actually, I've just spotted it now. There's a seven and an eight up here in the grid, and now there's a seven, eight double here, but there's no other seven eights in the grid at all. Um, so hold us now to have a look at column seven I think two three four nine to place you can see um, this is a two nine double squared two and I can't quite see how to use that fact to make more progress um, I can pencil mark sixes up here Fours down here. Oh, place a big three here. Oh, this is another three over there. Look, and this is going to be a three. A little bit of progress there. And in fact, we can resolve the threes now. That's got to be a three, and that's got to be a three. see four seven and eight to place here but there's a dearth of fours in the top part of the grid as well as the limited number of sevens and eights so that's not going to be useful um, six seven eight here <laughs> keep looking for the same numbers we need to place a two in row eight you can see it's not going to go there um, Forced to be here, so this is a seven or an eight in this cell here. Now place this two. Let's mark twos into those two positions. Wow, this is so congested now. You can see the missing number here is a four. We have a four here, so we're able to oops, pencil mark fours into those two cells. 
and we can use these sixes because of the this six here so we're able to place a couple of sixes into those positions and that's going to give us a nice double on two and six over on this side of the diagram now maybe that will be useful to place a four in column one so that's going to have to be in one of those two positions um, eight's got to be in one of these two positions Sixes here that allows us to find this pair of sixes into those two positions. So we now need seven, eight, and nine. This is going to have to be a nine. This is going to have to be a four, nine, six, six, four, nine, seven, eight, seven, eight into those positions there. This is going to have to be a seven or an eight. Now, can we make more progress now? We can lock fours up here. Um, goodness me. Normally the super fiendishes don't involve anything really, really horrendous. So I don't want to, I don't really want to start looking for X-wings and things like that. Ah, uh, yes, okay. Now this is a nice, um, this is a very interesting point. Now, Normally, in a puzzle like this, you would attack the weak points of the puzzle. Now, what do I mean by the weak points of the puzzle? I mean um, the rows and columns that contain lots and lots of numbers already. And you could see I was doing that during the solve and not really um, making any progress because there's such there's so few sevens and eights in, in the puzzle. So a little tip for you is sometimes it can be worth considering what looks like on the face of it, a strong section of the puzzle, and trying to think about whether, um, if we focus on those weak numbers, we might be able to weak numbers, i.e., the numbers that are as a dearth of the seven and the eights and the fours, whether we might be able to make some progress that way. And that got me having a quick look there at um, row six. I only got three numbers in row six. But if you scan it, pause the video if you need to, you'll notice something quite interesting about it. And that is that although there, you know, there's no, no particular information about sevens and eights, there's lots of information about the strong numbers in the puzzle. The ones, the twos, the sixes. So let's have a look at now at row six, considering where we can place the numbers one, two, and six. Well, you see it's a little bit restricted here, but there's one, two, and six are eliminated from this cell. Not really helpful here, not really helpful here. But look here, one, two, six. You can't place a one, two, or a six in either of these positions or this position. Now what does that mean? Well that means we've suddenly found out something about where we have to place the four, seven, and eight, the weak numbers in the puzzle. They're going to have to appear in this cell, in this cell, and in this cell. Now, given that, and given our pencil marks over here, I can't have a four here anymore. This is going to have to be a one, two, or a six. So that's definitely not a four. Let's eliminate that and place the four here. Um, now, given that, I also know that these two cells here contain one, two, or six. So where can I now place a four in this middle block? Well, it's not in either of these two positions for the reasons we've discussed. It's not in either of these two positions because of this four. And it's not here because of this four. So in fact, this cell has to be a four. And that allows us to place a four here and a six here, which I'm hoping will be useful. See now I can use this. This is now going to have to be a four over 
here. We've got more seven eight doubles over this side. Um, there aren't we? This is going to have to be the one. This is going to have to be a seven. And now we're starting to get somewhere again. Now I found the one seven pairing up there. This has to be an eight. It's going to lock an eight over down here. I'm going to do this longhand. You wouldn't you wouldn't need to in competition situations here. We're now. Uh, I think we're finishing the puzzle off because I think we've cracked the difficult part. This has got to be a four. This has got to be an eight. Um, that means that this has to be an eight. That's going to resolve all of the eight and the seven conundrums down here. Look. Um, Eight, two, seven, one, one, two, six, six, two, two, six. And there we go. So, quite an interesting little lesson there. Um, I hope this was useful solve or a useful illustration of another technique and we'll see you again next time in Cracking the Cryptic.